Hey everyone, this is Pallavi and today I'm going to show the seventh game of the book Logical Chess Move by Move by Irving Chernev. The, the opening played in this game was French Defense, White was Spielmann and Black was Wall. It was played in Vienna in 1926. Let's start. So White started with e4, controlling the center and making way for the bishop and going to come out and also controlling this d5 and f5 square. Black played e6. This opening is known as French defense. This move uh, does not occupy the center, but it supports the d5 square where you can push the d7 pawn to d5. Also, the e6 pawn push makes uh, way for the queen and the bishop to come out. And uh, now this pawn push makes black's position cramped but it may tempt white into a disaster premature attack. The French defense is not to be underestimated. It conceals a great deal of dynamic energy. So white played d4, creating a pawn center and making way for the c1 bishop to come out. White played uh, d4 and then black played d5, challenging the center and gives his queen more space. Now white played knight to c3, develops on a proper square, supporting the e4 pawn and uh, bears down on d5. So after knight c3, now black played knight to f6, bringing the knight to its strongest position with gain of time, a further attack on the e5, sorry, e4 pawn. After knight f6, white played e cross d5. Many players prefer to add to the pressure by playing bishop to g5 instead of e cross d5 bishop to g5 white develops a piece and pins the knight on f6 which uh, actually the exchange of these pawns which white played uh, relaxes the tension so after bishop g5 uh, spielman actually spielman who likes wide open position clears away a couple of pawns to give his pieces more room for their activities. Remember, the best openings to play are the ones you are most at home in, most comfortable with, the ones you feel comfortable with. Play the moves that you like, the one that best suits your style and temperament. Some players choose aggressive openings and some choose positional opening. It's up to your style of play. So after e cross d5, Black played e cross d5, replacing with another pawn which controls the center and the e4 square and frees his c8 bishop. Now white played bishop to g5, develops his bishop and also pins the knight on f6. And actually white is threatening to play bishop cross f6. If black captures with the queen, then knight captures pawn on d5, wins white a pawn. And uh, instead of queen cross f6, if black plays g cross f6, black is left with a weak doubled pawn and a broken and a broken kingside pawn structure. So after bishop to g5, white uh, black played bishop to e7. The simplest way of unpinning the knight and develops the bishop and also making way for the king to castle. Now white played bishop to d3. A good place for this bishop to develop from as it overlooks two diagonals especially towards the king side. This and this diagonal. So after bishop d3 now black played knight to c6. Develops with a threat on the pawn on d4. Now white played knight g e2. If uh, white had played knight to f3, then bishop g4, which would pin the f3 knight. So that's why white played knight g e2. Now black played knight to b4. After knight g e2, white is also uh, supporting the d4 uh, pawn. And then black played knight to b4, trying to get rid of the dangerous enemy piece, the d3 bishop. And also to assure himself a little advantage in keeping both his bishops. So after knight to b4, um, actually after, uh, instead of 
knight b4 had white had black played bishop to g4 then white could play f3 attacks the bishop on g4 and causes black to lose time by retreating it so after knight b4 white played knight to g3 another reason of developing the knight from g2 is to go to knight to g3 which is actually controlling the f5 and h5 square a dominating position for a knight or a bishop so uh, if white wants white can place a piece on f5 a piece need to do more than just stand there and look menacing to rattle the opponent so here black played knight cross d3 with a check now black has slight technical superiority in retaining two long range bishops uh, against white's knight and bishop but at the cost of a loss of time black has moved his knight three times to exchange it for a bishop that moved only once the knight had moved from b8 to c6 to b4 and then to d3 so more than that uh, his knight came off the board completely while the bishop left a piece in its place the queen by playing queen cross d3 after queen cross d3 the result is that white has four active pieces in play against two of blacks these four active pieces and white's active pieces are only these two so um whatever advantage exists is for white white is also prepared to castle on either side and mobilize both the rooks quickly so white can castle either long or short after this black played g6 this pawn move prevents white from placing his knight at f5 and uh, but it creates an organic weakness in black's king side as uh, f6 squares the squares f6 and h6 are now unguarded it's not protected by the g7 pawn anymore as it's pushed so after g6 now white played short castle after black played f6 these f6 and h6 are called holes and these are permanent weaknesses so after white played short castle white secures his king and gets one of his rooks into play remember never start an attack until your queen's rook is developed so the rooks are connected and the rook can come into play quickly after this black played c6 strengthens the center and also making way for the queen to come out now white played rook a e1 white seizes the only open file this one um since rooks belong on open files or files likely to be opened here the white rook is pinning the bishop on e7 since um the bishop is pinned the bishop a, a pinned piece cannot support another piece so white is actually threatening to play bishop cross f6 so after rook a e1 black played short castle unpins the e7 bishop and also saving the king like uh, retreating on a safe uh, position now um, let's pause and evaluate the position a glance shows white has achieved positional superiority white has five active pieces against black's two pieces this two knights this rook this bishop and this queen and black has only two pieces which are active right now the bishop and the knight and uh, also white has an open file controlled by a rook and um, also um, if there is a combination to be evolved it must be now before black gets to rearrange his pieces for defense here black's knight does not have a stable support because g7 pawn has already moved so after short castle now white played a good move rook cross e7 as after queen cross e7 uh, black's knight black f6 knight is getting pinned also before black could block the e file by placing bishop to e6 white had to capture the bishop so after this black could have played bishop to e6 and block the file so that's why before he could play this white captured rook cross e7
Now black has only one move, queen takes e7, now white played queen to f3, putting pressure on the pinned knight. Now black played king to g7, supporting the knight. Because if black had played bishop to f5, you know, blocking the attack, then white would play knight cross f5, then g takes a5 and queen g3. Now um, white is threatening to play bishop cross f6 with the discovered check and also attacks the queen. So if here black plays king to g7, then bishop cross f6 check, king takes f6, queen h4 check, king e6, rook e1 check and it's a skewer. Queen's gone. And instead of king g7, after queen g3, if black plays king h8, then queen h4, again pinning the knight, putting more pressure on it. Then king g7 only move to support the knight and then queen h6 check. King g8, bishop takes f6, threatening to checkmate by queen g7 and also attacking the black queen on e7. So that's why black had to play king g7. After this, white played another good move, knight c e4. Again putting pressure on the f6 knight. Now three pieces are attacking this knight. So black had to capture the knight with the pawn, a forced move. Also after uh, knight c e4, white is planning to play bishop cross f6 and it's a double attack. So after d cross e4, white played knight cross e4 again attacking the f6 knight. So after knight cross e4, now black played queen e6. Had black played queen cross e4, then bishop cross f6 check, king g8, queen cross e4 gains the queen. And after queen e6, now white played bishop cross f6 check, regains the piece. Black played king g8 and then white played queen f4, threatening a final invasion at h6 by playing queen h6 followed by queen g7 checkmate. So after queen f4, black resigned. So from this game, we learned that to occupy the center with pawns, develop your pieces towards the center, castle as early as possible. Whenever possible, develop with a threat. Do not move the same piece twice in the opening and neglect other pieces development. Play the moves that you like, the one that best suits your style and temperament. The best openings to play are the ones you are most at home in, means you are most comfortable with. Do not weaken the pawn structure in front of your castled king. Occupy weak squares or holes in enemy's position with your pieces. Rooks belong on open files or files likely to be opened. Never start an attack until your queen's rook is developed. So these are the principles we learned from this game. I hope you understood. So thank you for watching and please like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. I'll, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.